Well, thank you um, for this opportunity today. Um, so if you have any questions, you can type those into the Q&A or into the chat, and I will get to as many of those as I possibly can. Um, the first question that I sometimes get asked is, if you have not had a chance to, um, you should have your own usernames and passwords. But I always like to provide the most up-to-date um, kind of our um, demo site for the username and password. So if you want to um, take a picture of the screen, um, this is going to be the sites that I'm going to be using today. Um, if you teach middle school, so that's going to be starting with grade six, you will use the, the username is going to just be Glencoe Math. And if you um, teach algebra, geometry, or algebra two, you would use the one that says 912 Math and 2018. Um, and I'm going to show you little tips and tricks really for both of them that are there. Um, but our password does change each year. And so you can see across the bottom that this is the new password um, that we will be utilizing this year. So I'll give you just a second to write that down or to take a picture of that if you want. And I will show it again at the very end as well. Um, so the first thing I want to talk to you about today are just kind of some of the, the ways, some of the, the nice features that are included um, in the teacher editions. So if you were in the demo sites um, and you open the teacher edition from Algebra, Geometry, or Algebra 2, you're actually opening the teacher edition. Um, if you are opening from the uh, middle school courses and you click the ebook, you have kind of a version of the student edition, but then it also has um, an option to turn the answers on and off. And I will demonstrate that for you. But I wanted to just show you some basic navigation um, and some and talk about some of the things that you're going to see. I'm going to start with the Algebra One book. And when you open it up, it does open up into this two page view just so it looks just the same way it does in your print book. If I go to the left hand side where kind of the, the menu bar is, I can go down and I'm going to just switch over to um, our chapter on linear or equations of linear functions. So you're always going to see and and to make this a little easier to see, I'm going to switch to in the bottom um, of the screen, you'll see just a little uh, blue rectangle. I'm going to click on that and it'll switch it to a one page view, which then allows me to make the screen bigger by either using my zoom tool at the top or this little nice one that's here that is to fit the width. And I think that's always a kind of a teacher favorite is being able to fit the width um, because then it just kind of takes up the whole entire screen. So some things for you to make sure that you know are there um, is just the introduction of the chapter with the mathematical background, which is really important um, to kind of set the stage, helping you um, know where we're kind of moving along with this. And then you'll see an essential question for students. They're going to have the then and the now. And then the why is going to be in their student edition. So always a great way to set the stage and help answer that, that age old question, why do we have to learn this? Um, you'll also see that it mentions that there is a chapter project. I'll show you where you can find those chapter projects online. But just as a little hint, anytime you see these little icons that are on the screen, in this case we have a check mark, if you look down at the very bottom of this, we call this kind of our little tray or our carousel, you're going to see that same little question mark is there. And if you wanted to find this particular resource, you could click right on that little question mark. And we'll talk a little bit more about this tray and some of the resources that are there um, as I move through the book a little further. Um, also, both teachers and students have access to a couple of tools here where they can highlight, they can write in their book. So we have kind of a pen tool, they can put a note. So if there was something in here that I wanted to be sure that I remembered, I could click on the highlighter tool and I could highlight part of the book and be able to, to re get back to that at a later time. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, once you're in this mode to, to switch from page to page, you're either going to use the left side to go back the right side to move forward. And here you can see it talks about all of the different things that are online. So graphing tools, again, notice there's that icon. There's the same icon across the very bottom. Um, it's got information about foldables, the, the ebook, and then some sketchpad resources that are built in, as well as Learn Smart. And I'm going to spend some time talking about this because there have been some updates to Learn Smart that make this a way for you to make some really great personalized practice for your students. So if you've never used Learn Smart before, I want you to write that down because that may be an extra little um, way that you can really uh, build your practice this year. So we'll take a look at that. Um, but it's got the foldables. So again, we'll move forward one page. 
And then on this page, um, what you're going to see is the get ready for the chapter. So at the on on the facing page of this, if I switch over to the page, oops, um, you're going to see that we're really getting we're doing some concept checks that are here. So how are the students um, getting ready for this particular chapter? Do they have the prerequisite skills that they need? And then over on the side, it says that there is an intervention planner that's here. So you've got some information on things you can do if your students are not quite ready for the the uh, with the prerequisite knowledge that they'll need for the upcoming chapter. There is a preview of the performance task and their vocabulary and just some really, this is a great way you'll see across the bottom when we talk about creating that vocabulary, you're going to see that we always use the define example and ask. So there's going to always be some good questions for you um, in that sense of really setting the stage for getting that good mathematical understanding. Um, on the facing page, you're going to see it talks about the pacing that you're going to have for this particular chapter, um, the overall progress. And I always call teachers attention to this part that's right here in the center, the then, the now, and the next. Um, how does this really relate? And so for those of you who have been teaching for a while, you probably already know this part. But for our newer teachers that are um, entering both the math background and then this then, now, next is a really great way for them to kind of get a big understanding of what is happening in the um, in this particular uh, chapter. You're going to see, again, it's going to talk about some of the different resources that you're going to be using. Um, and then it also talks about some worksheets that you have. And so I want you to notice that on this page that for every single lesson, you have five different worksheets. You have a skills practice, a homework practice, a word problem practice, a study guide and intervention, and an enrichment. And then this one is also a study guide which provides some Cornell style notes for you, um, for your students, if you wanted to print those or give them to them in a digital format. If I was going to give you a suggestion of which one of these that I would use, it would be this one right here in the center that is called practice. Not only does it mirror some of the same types of practice problems that the students see in their book, but this is the only one that is digitized in our assessment center. So this one would allow you to create digital homework for your students. You can pick and choose the questions that you want, or you can just have this assignment just as is. But this worksheet, the only one that is in a digital gradable format for your students. So if you assign this to them digitally, it would only it would not only have them do the work, but it would also grade it for you. And I'll show you how you can utilize that part. Um, as I move forward just a little bit, we're going to see as we get into the lessons. And you'll see that each lesson also continues with that then, now, and why. It's going to give that kind of context that's there. And as a teacher, you're going to see over here that you'll always have a launch. And then as we start to move into teach mode, you're going to get some great strategies that are with the teach mode. I do want to call your attention that this is this looks just exactly like the student page right here in the center. And so you're going to see right here where it talks about example. And then I want you to notice that this little purple icon, no matter what page I go to, that little purple icon is next to each one of the examples. And that's because in with that little purple icon, there is a personal tutor that accompanies each and every one of those. And so for right now, I'm going to go ahead and click on this at the very bottom because I want you to see what a personal tutor is. So these personal tutors are going to be teachers walking students Hello. step by step through an example that is similar to the one that's in their book. It's not the same example but it is a similar one and you can go full screen with that. But what's great about this is even the students have access to this. So I'll let Mrs. Workman talk for just a moment. 31 seconds. The second ordered pair. So as you can see, it's got that full um, audio that goes along with it as well. And it just walks students step by step through an example that's similar to that one in their book. So this is wonderful for the, any of those students who are absent. Then what you'll also see is that we have also um, put these into Spanish as well. So um, the Spanish versions of the book um, or the Spanish Bienvenidos a los tutores personales de Mar also done by a native Spanish speaker. So you're going to see that there is that Spanish version for each one of those personal tutors as well. 
So as you can see here, it opened up into a new pop-up window and I see across the very bottom, a new tab, I should say, and I can get back to my teacher's edition by simply clicking on the tab at the very top of the screen. All right, so that's definitely a very helpful kind of tool that's there. Um, teachers, you can also use that as professional development. If this is a new topic for you, your first year teaching this particular level, and you want to see and hear an example, those are built in there for you as well. Um, here you'll also see a great part on the right hand side for teachers, and these are some um, level discussion questions. So AL stands for a type of a question that if your students could answer it, it would tell you that they are approaching a level of understanding. Your students can answer this one, they have an on level understanding. And if they can answer this question, they have a beyond level understanding. So I just look at these colors and I say, okay, this one's kind of cautionary. I'm getting there. This one is calm blue seas. I'm on, I'm, that's on on level. And then this go, go green color, that is a beyond level. So you're going to see this same kind of coding is all the way throughout our books, um, whether it's with the examples or whether it's talking about some of the resources that we have as well. Um, here you can see that there is the example and there is the guided practice that's there. Now, here is a key difference between the middle school books and the, um, at the Algebra, Geometry, and Algebra 2 books. I'm going to switch very quickly over to the middle school, and I want to show you the difference. If I'm at the middle school level and I open up the ebook, you're going to see the pages look just like the exact student edition. So let's say that I'm going into integers. Um, I have the same types of things, my foldables, my essential question. I can go to a single page view and I can move through these. So I have a lot of the same things that I have in that in that teacher's edition. But what you're going to see here is that you don't see the teacher information on the side. So you'll have your kind of walk around teacher's edition for that. There is a place online where you can see that in a digital format, and I will show you that. But the main reason I wanted to pull this up is because these have a little bit different icon, but it does say tutor. In fact, let me make that a little larger for you. It does say tutor and it matches the icon down at the very bottom. But the big difference between middle school and high school books is that as a teacher, you have what I'm going to call a super secret button that your students don't have. We get to the homework page that's here. You have a button down here in the lower right hand corner that says answers on and off. And that's just it allows you to um, turn those answers to those pages because those students have those interactive additions. And this just gives you a way to quickly show them what the answers or what whatever the things were that they should have written in their books. So um, that's just the, the biggest difference between the middle school and the high school books um, is just that the middle school one, you actually have the student edition with this answers on off button. So going back over to my high school book. Um, and I'll show you again, all of this information, This um, these leveled questions, they are provided for you in your walk around teacher edition. And they're also for you online, just not on that particular page, but I'll show you where you can get those. Um, here you'll also see the mathematical practices, those um, habits of mind that we are trying to instill in our students. And then you'll notice here, it talks about go online. Now, um, the um, e-lessons, the interactive presentations, because these this program is a little older, some of these were flash-based, um, there is a PowerPoint presentation that is available for all of the lessons now. So if you ever used the interactive presentation before, um, some of those had to be taken down because they had some flash built into them. Um, but I will show you where you can get to a PowerPoint presentation for each lesson. Um, as I move through the pages, you're going to see just the same type of built-in support. And then I want to show you this part right here that says, need another example. These examples are also in the PowerPoint presentation. So that's a great way for you to kind of remember that those are there as if it says, need another example. Um, so as we move through, here is one of the boxes that talks about differentiated instruction, and this is some suggestions for your students who are approaching level or on level. But I always tell teachers, anytime you see any of those boxes, um, whether it's an ELL, so English Language Learner Box, um, or a um, approaching level, on level, or beyond level, be sure that you read those because you know your students the best, and it's a great way to be able to 
um, find just some little nuggets of tips that will help you in your classroom. Um, as we move into the practice for students, you're gonna see that the first couple of examples or the first couple of problems are always going to be tied to examples. So the check your understanding and then the practice and problem solving. Now notice too that this one says step-by-step -step solutions begin on R11. So not only in the back of the book are the odd answers in the back, but for some of the questions, they have this little green dot around them and it lets them know that if they turn to the back of the book, they will see a fully worked out step-by-step -step solution to that particular problem. Now, so I always caution teachers, if you have students who only show their work to one problem and it happens to be this one, they probably didn't do it themselves. They found it online. Now, switching over to the middle school book, you're going to see the same type of thing with the homework, only for them, theirs are going to have a little house that go along with them. So you're going to see the little house that's here, and that tells you that there is a step-by-step -step solution. In this case, they don't have to turn to the back of the book. They can, but they also, or they, if they go to the back of the book, they won't see them. They'll only see the, the odd answers. But if they click right here, the little house that's at the bottom of the screen, they can see that that is where they will get the step-by-step -step solutions. One of the things that teachers really like about the step-by-step -step solutions, and this one doesn't have a whole lot of steps to it, but these little blue coaching notes off to the side really give that step-by-step -step explanation of exactly how and why we do each step of those. So I know I went kind of quick with that. So I'm gonna show you one more time with the middle school books. It talks about go online. We have this icon looking down here across the bottom. You can see that the little house is there. And when you click on that, it will open up the window that gives those step-by-step -step solutions. So it's a great help, um, especially for those students who have been absent from class who just need to see some extra parts that are there. Speaking of that, notice right here at the high school level, you also have a whole section of extra practice. So in the back of the book, there are extra practice problems. So if you decide you don't want to utilize these, you can actually use those extra practice problems that are there. Uh, they always try to give as many teaching tips as they can to teachers on the side, some great watch out boxes, any of those misconceptions that students might have. And then this little box right here is definitely a teacher favorite box. And that is because it talks about differentiated homework options. So it tells you if you're if you have like kind of lower level students, these are the problems that McGraw Hill feels are the most appropriate questions for those students. For the core students, um, these are the questions. And then for your advanced students, these would be some of those questions that you might choose to assign to the students. And I will show you how you can, um, or I, I'll show you how if you decide you didn't want to use these and you wanted to use a worksheet instead, you have that flexibility as well. All right. And then when I scroll back up over here, you can see we also give you um, the DOK levels, the levels of complexity that are here. So questions 10 through 24 are level one type questions. And then you'll see how that kind of graduates up and teaching the mathematical practices is there. And then just notice that these questions, these C level questions, this is only noted in your teacher's edition. So the students don't know where the quote, harder questions show up. Um, but these are going to be kind of our higher order thinking questions that are there. Um, if you teach lower level students, please don't shy away from these questions. Just know that you might need to have a little bit more kind of, you might need to work with them a little bit closer to do them. But these are the deep, rich questions. Um, so we definitely want you to get to these, but just be aware that these may be a little challenging for your lower level students, but they are definitely possible for all students. Just depends on the level of support we might need to give to them. Um, you're also going to see that every one of the one of the um, practice sections is going to end with a part that says higher order thinking skills. Now these are really getting at those mathematical practices and really getting at those higher order thinking skills. Again, please don't shy away from these. If your kids can do these problems and the C-level problems, they have a really, really good understanding of the mathematics. So um, just kind of keep that in mind. Don't tell the kids these questions are hard. Um, just let them know that these are just some good thinking questions that are built into there as well. And then you'll see wherever possible we give you, we let you know which questions 
questions tied to which mathematical practice is there. So definitely very helpful um, for teachers as we are going through and planning. And then for our high school books, um, you're going to notice that there is a page here that is called Preparing for Assessment. These questions kind of go through the entire book. So you'll see that it's kind of, or through the entire chapter. So you'll see that's why this one's starting at number 53, because at the very, um, in, in module three, it went up to 52. So you're going to see that consistent numbering all the way throughout. It gives you um, some great notes over here about which content standards those go with and then how to diagnose the student errors and the differentiated instruction. So the ebook itself, and then it just moves to lesson four too. So the ebook itself is just a great way for you to maybe do some planning if you don't have your print book in front of you, but just want, know all of those individual pieces that are there. And then again, know that the middle school book behaves a little bit differently. In fact, I'm going to go to the middle school book. Um, and so for those of you who want to see those same types of things, maybe you don't have your teacher edition yet, or you wanted to know where you can get that information. If you're on your main dashboard, if you're on your main dashboard and you go to the menu in the upper left hand corner and click on that and then scroll down to where it says plan and present. Now, this is also here for high school, but I'm just showing middle school because you don't have the book, the ebook that shows that. If you go to that part, and I'm still in my integers, when I look at this, I can see my suggested pacing and I can see the essential question, the previous now next. So everything that was available before um, or in that in that um uh, high school version is also available for you here as well. So here you're going to see your standards, your lesson launch. So here are all of those pieces of that lesson launch. Um, you're going to see the teach the concept. So you're going to see all of those same things. So there's personal tutors and here are your um, level discussion questions. So this is in your teacher's edition, but it's also here in a digital format if you wanted to see that as well. And it follows just right along with your um, teacher, with the, with the student pages and with the teacher guide that goes right along with it. So just wanted you to see um, where those individual kinds of pieces are um, to be able to get to those. So I'm gonna pause right there for just a second. Shresh, are there any questions that have come in about anything with the teacher edition or the student edition? I'm just edition? saying a lot of great, wonderful, and wow. I think that's something that the teacher edition stuff that this juicy, nice stuff that you're showing now, it's great. I don't see any questions, but yes, if Shelly is stopping now, this is a good time to have any questions that you have that we can answer. Uh, someone was, at, a lot of people actually, three people were asking if you could show us the demo thing again. So I did write that in the chat. Uh, if you can go back to the demo uh, account that you shared. So I did write that in the chat, but if you want to take a screenshot, you can do that. Absolutely. Any questions? And we'll, we'll have some more questions in a little bit. I just like to yeah. stop just kind of right after this little part of kind of the teacher's edition as just kind of a walkthrough of what was in the teacher edition um, and those types of resources that are there. Um, so the other thing that I'll let you know too is that if we look at, oops, I want to go there. If we look at just the what's in the, in the um, uh, middle school books, you're going to see that there's always a lesson that's called Inquiry Lab. And then the very next lesson after it is kind of the more more kind of direct instruction kind of uh, uh, lesson that's there. And I know how teachers are. I was a math coach and I was a teacher in the classroom myself. Sometimes with these inquiry labs, because these are about um, students working with uh, manipulatives, their questions. In fact, let me actually go to my book and I'll show you what I'm what talking about that. Um, these are questions or problems where students are actually the ones doing um, the, uh, let's choose this one right here. I love this one on multiplying integers, um, where students are using manipulatives, they're having collaborative conversations. Um, these lessons that are called inquiry lessons are hands-on activities for the students. In general, you want the students to be doing, when you're in an, in an inquiry activity, you want the students to be doing the most of the talking. You want to be the one you're not saying much. You're going to use some of your teacher guided, teacher guided, 
provide um, information on good questions to ask. But in general, you want the kids to be working through these activities on their own. So these are going to be some group activities that they're working through. And I love this one. It's about um, how to how you're proving that why negative times negative is a positive. And the answer is not because that's the rule. It's there is a mathematical reasoning why negative times negative is positive. So always one of my favorite, favorite um, kinds of manipulative activities to do. And I will tell you, most te some teachers tell me, oh, but I just want to get to the lesson. I just want to tell the students what the, you know, what the rules are for math. But if you let them um, in, if you let them find the rules in these inquiry labs, that understanding, that essential understanding that we want them to get is going to be longer lasting. We always, as as adults, as just as, as humans, we remember what things that we experience, things that we do. And if as teachers, all you do is jump directly to the direct instruction and you tell them the rules for multiplying integers, but you don't let them do things hands-on, they may never really get that understanding. Why is negative times negative a positive? Because she said so. But they don't have that enduring understanding. And what happens, I will tell you this, is that when we teach the rules for adding and subtracting, the rules for, for multiplying and dividing, and we teach those and we teach them separately and we give quizzes, and if the kids don't have a good understanding of that, that's why when we give them a, an assessment and they mix the rules all up, it's because they just said, well, I just liked this rule with this problem. And so if you let them have those ex those, those um, inquiry opportunities to talk about it and to actually explore that themselves, um, they will have a longer lasting um, understanding of that. And I promise you, the time that you spend on in, on putting the inquiry labs into practice in your classroom means that the lesson that follows immediately after it will go much quicker and much smoother because the kids have learned the rules. They have found those rules on their own and it makes those rules a lot more meaningful. So if you have not used the inquiry labs in the past, I want to, um, that's gonna be my, my challenge for you this year is to try to incorporate some of these inquiry labs into your um, day to day, your um, practice in your classrooms because they really do pay dividends. The other thing is when you're utilizing any of the inquiry labs, and you'll see those in the high school as well, um, you're going to see it always refers to tools. So if I go to the tools down here across the bottom, you're going to see that there are, especially at the middle school, I think the high school does too, but there are two different versions of these. Um, the tools themselves, this one right here that looks like this on the left-hand side, these are, I'm going to say, our more advanced tools. These are, this is our newer e-toolkit. Um, you'll also see it with our newer math programs and those types of things. And to find the tools, you just click this button that says add e-tools. And you can see that in this level, I have um, different facts tables, but be sure that you click this little drop down and it'll show you that here are, here's where you can find algebra tiles. Here's where you can find great ones on two and three dimensional figures, some construction models that are there. And each level has kind of its own different tools that are here. So you have the counters tools, some amazing fraction models that are there that you can go in and play with, some statistical tools, and then some graphing tools. Those of you teaching Algebra 2, be sure when you look at the um, statistical tools, there's some really cool ones inside there for you guys. But you're going to see that they are level appropriate. So we've got the coordinate grapher, but then we also have, especially for sixth grade, we have the, that focuses on just that first quadrant as well. And then all kids have access to a graphing calculator. So these e-tools, they're here for all students. They're here for all teachers, and they're always under that little icon that looks like a little, um, the little shapes that are going to be there. This one was put in place um, because at the time, um, our e toolkit had not evolved to the point of giving us the two color counters. So this is our K-5 version, but we still made this available. Some kids are a little bit more familiar. If I'm gonna give you one tip that goes along with this one is right here where it says select a grade. My tip is don't. If you pick a grade, we limit the number of tools that you have. So instead, if you look right here underneath manipulatives, 
here you can see all of the different manipulatives that are built into this one as well. So you, you've got counters in the other one, but you also have two color counters here. And some people like these a little bit better with the colors. And what's nice is these also flip. So if I wanted it just like a two color counter you would have in your classroom. So one side is red, the other side is yellow. So we can talk about negatives, and we can talk about positives and they can move all around the screen and you can remove them from the screen as well. So just two different versions of some tools that are here. These are a little bit more advanced, um, but we have fun with these as well. I will even tell you this one, um, that this one is called Bears in a Boat and it's from our kindergarten part that's there. Um, but I actually, when I was in the classroom, um, I like to put these little bears up there and I would put some text that went right along with it. So it might be kind of the directions for the day. Um, the bears were given kind of the directions for the day. So when the kids came in, um, they could see whatever those directions were. Um, there are different um, backgrounds. So some people like to play, um, if you wanna have like a game with students, there are game boards, there are storyboards built in here. So you could even have like a baseball game if you're playing something, if you have like a competition in your classroom with different teams, um, just some different kind of fun things to play around with. So um, two different versions of the eTools. Be sure to play along in your work with any of those that are in there. Just kind of give yourself the, an, an opportunity to explore those. They're a lot of fun. And if you find one that you like, be sure that you share it with your peers as well. Okay, so I want to get back into and I want to talk about this tab right here that says resources. So it's always the third one down on each one. So whether you're in middle school or whether you're in high school, the third one down is going to say resources. So let me switch to this one. Okay, so whether and I'm going to show you on both one. So I'm going to get out of my my teacher's edition that's here. I'll get out of this part. So from this part, I click on menu, third option down says resources. So whether you're in high school or, or middle school, the third one down. Now, when you get to here, the way that you navigate is to click right here in this little drop down. So you're gonna choose whichever chapter and then whatever lesson. So when you do that, you're going to see the resources that are available for that particular lesson. So I'm gonna start first with algebra one. And I'm going to actually switch to the one that says chapter overview. So we're going to take a look at the things that are here to support the teaching of the entire chapter. So if you roll your mouse over the top of any of these resources, it tells you what that resource is. So this is just a quick link to those e-tools, but you can also see the resources for that particular um, chapter. So here's where you can see that chapter four project. So here's my project. And notice right here beside it, there is a rubric that goes along with it. Now, one of the things that teachers tend to forget is that there are multiple pages and you can also use results per page. And I'm going to make this say 48 so I can see all of them at one time. So as I scroll down, you can see all of the resources that are here to support the entire chapter. Now, in your differentiation chart, it talked about, um, in your teacher's edition, it talks about different um, resources in what's called math triumphs. And this is kind of our, this was our intervention program. And you actually have access to these pages in math triumphs. So if you have students who are weak in some of their prerequisite skills, math triumphs is a wonderful place to go to and to be able to see the resources that are in here. So if I go to, we just open up this one. So you're gonna see that this is, so remember I'm in, remember I'm in algebra one, this is where students can go to get help on things like the operations with integers. They need help with fractions, real numbers, measurement and geometry probability and statistics. And so it gives real good explanations of the content. And then there's going to be some examples that go along with it. So this is called Math Triumphs and you access it from, make sure that this says the chapter and then the chapter overview. And that is going to be right here for you. Um, and so that's really all I wanted to show you from the chapter level. But if you switch here instead and you go to a lesson level, 
you're going to see that here are the resources for the particular lesson. Now, these are just kind of, um, if you knew that you just wanted worksheets, you could click here and it would narrow this down and show you just the worksheets. But I'm going to give you the whole big picture as we are looking at this. So first of all, there is a quiz that happens to go with this one. It is over chapters one and two, um, but these are the answers to it. But if you wanted the PDF version of the quiz or the Word doc of the quiz, those are right here for you as well. So I'm going to snooze that. Um, but if I wanted to um, open up, oops, let me cancel that one. Um, if you wanted to open up and see any of those PDF versions or the Word versions, you could download those. So you're going to see that this is the quiz, half of the sheet. If you wanted to cut it, print it and cut it in half, you could do a quiz on um, those individual parts. This like that practice worksheet is also in a digital format. So you could give that to your students to do digitally. So just kind of keep that in the back of your mind. Um, the enrichment worksheet is one of the five. And then you're going to see down here, keep scrolling. Here's my practice worksheet. In fact, I'm going to switch just so you can see them all at once, just to worksheets. And here is my enrichment worksheet in three formats. The practice worksheet, the one that I want you to put a big star next to because it's in digital format. There's skills practice focusing on just the skills. Study guide and intervention is oftentimes a teacher favorite because it has extra examples that accompany the exercises. So a lot of teachers really like the study guide and intervention pages because they provide that additional instruction. Word problems, because we know students love word problems and beg for more. And then down here across the bottom is where the pages of the study notebook are. So the study notebook is a Cornell style notes that really um, a lot of teachers like to either print these or in a lot of cases, they'll just pull up kind of these graphic organizers and project them. And then students can copy what they need. You know, they can copy those into their notes. So the study notebook is kind of loosely based on Cornell style note taking format. Um, also here is, um, let me go back to all resources. Also here is, it says the interactive student edition. So the er, interactive student guide. So these came because teachers said, okay, we like the problems that are inside the book, but middle, so this is only applies to algebra, geometry, and algebra two. Um, high school students didn't have like an interactive kind of book. So te so teachers asked McGraw-Hill said, you know, could we, could you create something that we could print that would be a little bit more of an interactive kind of book for students? And so that's where these pages of this interactive study guide came from. So you're going to see the objectives, you're going to see some examples, and you're going to see some additional questions that are here. So this becomes kind of an interactive book if you wanted to provide this for your students. So it's a great tool that's here, and it is also available to the students. They can get to it from within their ebook, but it's kind of hidden. So I just always let, like to let people know that those pages are right here. So if you're thinking, wow, I wish I could kick it up a notch for those questions that are inside the book, or I wish there was a way for my students at the high school level, algebra, geometry, algebra two, to have an interactive kind of book. So they see the example and then and the practice problem right beside it. That's where you'll want to pull these interactive student guide pages from. So definitely a teacher favorite. And here are your answers as well. Um, also teacher favorites right here. Be sure that you take a look at this part right here. This is where you can get to your PowerPoint presentation. So it's going to make me download this PowerPoint presentation, and that's okay because power downloading it ensures that I have it when I need it. So it's going to switch over. So here is a PowerPoint presentation, and you can see that the five minute check is there, but they're individual questions. They're not, it's one question per slide. And then you can see the actual examples are fully worked out. And then this is where you, these are these extra examples that are inside. So in your teacher's edition, when it said extra example on the side, that's what these are. So teachers really like this part that's here. Um, I will give you a little bit of a hint. If you're in presentation mode, when you click on any parts of these, it hyperlinks directly over to that part. 
So it's a great way to kind of get to that very beginning part of those lessons. The other thing is if you're in any of, oh, let me actually, let me go back to that lesson and I'm just gonna click. So I'm just literally clicking my mouse step-by-step. Step. Notice the great color coding that shows where everything comes from. So it's very helpful for the students but it's just a great way for you to be able to show questions and answers to the students. But this is what I wanted to show you. Um, there are some questions at the end. If you want your students, so let's say that we're having them write these questions down or it's kind of using it as a ticket out the door. If you just use the arrow buttons and it'll just move, oops, sometimes it'll just move to the next slide, but it also does show the answer that goes along with that coming right in. So because it's PowerPoint, if you wanted to make any changes to that, even to the animations, that gives you that flexibility of being able to do that. All right, let's jump back over here. Um, another teacher favorite resource is this one. If you haven't used this, if it's been hidden from you, be sure that you know that it's here, especially for those um, more challenging kinds of questions, ones <clears throat> multi-step questions, and that is eSolutions. eSolutions is going to give you a fully worked out step-by-step -step solution to every single problem that is inside your book. So just scroll down, and if you were teaching a particular lesson that's here, so let's say we're teaching ratios and proportions, you can choose all evens, odds, or custom. Maybe you just had the students do numbers one to seven, um, 16, and 22. You could choose to show the detailed solution. Don't check both of them, um, but if you uncheck both of them, you're printing just kind of a worksheet. But I can choose the solutions, and I am going to print this to a PDF, and I'm going to do two columns, and I'll print. I'll show you what this looks like. It looks like it's going to take a long time for it to generate, but it takes just a second. And then it gives the full worked out step-by-step -step solution. Again, it keeps downloading it for me. And I can see, so just like I said before, those great blue coaching notes on the side are really super helpful. So a lot of teachers will print these out, um, have them in a binder near their door in case any of the students um, um, are absent and need a way to check their answer, it's a great way for them to be able to do that. So again, that's the eSolutions manual. And then all of the rest of the resources are down here for you um, to be able to use as well. So anytime you were in the ebook and you click the icons across the bottom, it was bringing you to the resources center as another tab, or you can go directly to the resources center at any time by click by looking at the third option down. Um, I also want to show you, this is one of the places where things have changed a little bit, and that is in terms of Learn Smart. Um, Learn Smart provides you with a way to do um, digital practice for your students. If you just click this button that says Add Assignment, you will see that you can create a new assignment. And then under that, you can select your content. So if you are working in expressions and equations, you can choose to select just that part. And you can see that it talks about how many the different types of questions and notice that there's the drop down that goes along with it. So I probably don't want to make an assignment that's going to take students between three and four hours to do. So instead, I'm going to uncheck all of the rest of those. And then I could just come in here. Maybe we're working on um, uh, performing arithmetic operations on polynomials and we're just working on addition and subtraction. I can create an assignment that is just those two. It'll take students between 18 and 27 minutes to do. And I click continue. I can call it what I want. So lessons, um, so I'm gonna call this polynomial practice. Lessons one and two. And I can decide, I can set do my settings for this. So I want my students, they're going to do this on Thursday. It's going to be due on Friday. And all of my students are going to do it. I can change the instructions if I want, but I just click assign. And then that would be an assignment for them to do. So what does that assignment actually look like for them? Um, we can go in 
And I think I can click view. Oh, they haven't done that. Obviously, they haven't done this one yet. Um, but you could actually go in and um, have one of your students go in and show you what that looks like. But it gives them an opportunity to, um, to really have some personalized practice that goes along with it. And it will change the questions up for the students. So they should not have all of the same exact questions. They should have different variable numbers that are inside there. Um, home, by the way, always gets you back to this main screen. All right, last little part for our last little bit of time is I wanna show you underneath assessment. There is an amazing how-to guide right here. If you've never used our assessment center, you want to download this how-to guide but you just go into and notice you have all of the banks of questions. You So if you teach Algebra 1, you also have Geometry and Algebra 2. This upper left-hand corner is, the, in the demo, it's kind of a mess because there's a lot of different ones that are here. Um, but these are what I'm going to call banks of questions. This is where all of the questions reside. So all of the questions for Chapter 4 are going to be in this bank of questions. In the lower left-hand corner, these are all of the pre-made things. So if you remember, I told you that in if I go to chapter four, this is where all of the things that are pre-made reside. So remember I told you I like that worksheet that was the, called practice. Here is that worksheet and it's in a digital format. So if you wanted the students to do it, paper, pencil, but then input their answers online, you could assign this practice worksheet to them. Here is also where you will find all of the versions of the assessments. Form one is going to be mostly skills-based questions. Form 2A and 2B um, are going to be some um, kind of, they're going to be there. These are going to be parallel 2A and 2B. Um, they're going to have a mix of questions. Um, 2C and 2D are also going to be parallel for each other. These are going to be a little bit more challenging. And Form 3 is going to be mostly word problems. And here are where those quizzes are as well. And how easy is it to change something? Well, let's watch. If I wanted to start with Form 2A, I could grab Form 2A and I could drag it into my workspace. So here it is in my workspace. I'll make these little parts over here a little bit smaller. And I can edit any of the questions. I can also go up here across the top and I can um, change the question types that are here. I can turn on um, multi-select if I wanted to pick and choose questions that, that are here, but I also could write any of my own questions. If you take any of these and you change and you wanted to move the order of them, you can absolutely change the order and notice that it changes, it renumbers those for you. You can go to file, you can export these into a variety of different formats. So a lot of teachers like to use like Quizlet or Kahoot that need things in a Word document. Here it is as a Word document. You have your QTI, but you also can print a single version or multiple versions of a particular assessment. So great little tools that are there. Um, one of the questions always comes up, how do I create a test? And if I'm just gonna show you real quick, you can click create a new test. You can call this what you want. I'll just call it Shelly. And I am going to build an empty test and I'll show you why I like to do that. I'm gonna click finish. And then for now, it's sitting right here underneath my tests. So oh goodness knows there's a whole bunch of tests in here. So let me get to where I can see it. Oh my goodness, I didn't know so many people had assessments in here. We gotta clean up this demo. So, um, and I don't, oh wait, I, you know where I did? I put it in the folder that it was in. Hold on just a second. Let me scroll back up here. Sorry about that. It was in, goodness, I, again, I had no idea there was so much inside here. Um, it actually is sitting in this folder right here. So that's okay. So I'm going to actually close this out and I'm going to show you why I did that. If I want to just pick and choose the questions that I want, I can now grab form 2A and I can move this over. Now I can see, here are the questions. I wanna be sure that I've chosen to see all of the questions. And I'm gonna click right here underneath test and I'm gonna choose enable multi-select and watch what I can do now. Oh, I like this question. And by the way, when the questions print, they don't show the answer that's just there for you now. But I just picked four questions on this that I like 
I'm going to go back to test and I'm going to say add to existing test. And I'm going to add them to, I put it in the wrong folder, but that's okay. I'm going to add them to my one, my test that said Shelly. And that's how you quickly add questions. So you can pick the questions that you want by enabling multi-select and you can put questions directly onto that. So I pulled questions just now. So there's my four questions. Again, I'm gonna close this out. It automatically saves. And I now want to actually put some questions from their homework. So I'm gonna drag over lesson four, three. That was their homework practice. I'm gonna go back to test. I'm gonna choose multi-select. And because I like to put questions that came directly off of their homework. So I'm going to choose three questions. I am going to add to an existing test. Again, I come back to here and I find where I hid that test and I probably should have just put it in the my test folder, but that's okay. I come down here, I put it in Shelly and it adds those three questions to it. So that's the way that you can really mix and match the types of questions that are there. So I see now that I have this with seven questions on it. And then now I want to assign it to my students. So I'm going to click right here in the upper right hand corner to classes and assignments. Here's my demo class. So I want to make the assignment to this demo class. And I want to assign them this assignment that I created. Oops. I'm going to drag that assignment over that I created. And now I tell the system to record the scores for it. I want all of my kids to do it. Oh wait, Abby's been absent, so I don't want Abby to have to do that. I can set the date and time. How many times can they do it? If it's a test, once. If it's homework, multiple times. Do it till you get it right. Do I let them check their answers? Again, homework, absolutely. Assessment, not so much. Do I wanna scramble the questions? I can do that as well. Do I tell the kids how they did? And then I can tell them when they can see the, the reports that are there. It is, makes the assignment to the students. Here's the date and time. If I need to edit that, I can. And if I want to see their scores, I go right here to reporting. I grab that demo class and I can see all of these different reports that go right along with it. So we are at the end of our time together today. Um, I will stay on and answer questions that you have, but I just wanted to say thank you for being here. Um, I know you've had a long day today. It's just the start of my day, um, but I have got both the username and the password up on the screen as well. If you have any other questions, you can send those um, to your sales representative, um, but we will stay on and answer a few questions for you um, right here. But if you have gotten the information that you need, um, I just wanna say thank you again for being here. Thank you for being a teacher and doing um, this amazing job, doing the work every single day. You are very much appreciated. Thank you, Shelly. I appreciate your time today. Thanks a lot. That's a lot of great learning for all our participants. We get the topic. Thanks a million. You're very welcome. Any questions for Shelly before we send, you know, close this webinar off? I'm having a look at the chat. Thank you, thank you. Okay. I saw one question by Leela. I hope it's answered because Leela, you did say now it's all clear. Uh, it was about, is there any fun activity provided in an easy level here? And I'm not sure what that question mm. is. Leela, if you can repeat that for us. Vala says we haven't received the recorded sessions. Yes, you will have them by this week. Uh, so what I would say for, for Leela as well is that fun activities, um, any of the, especially at the high school level, the sketch pad activities um, are going to be um, a little bit of fun and hands-on for the students. Those activities are built um, directly into there. But in terms of like games and things like that, those are not, um, it generally doesn't have those. And mostly because teachers can find a lot of those things online. Okay. Kiran says, thank you for giving us time. It's all, it's a new thing for me. You're very welcome. Uh, any other questions? Okay. Leela says, oh, okay. 
Excellent. And we will send you the recording. We will send you the recording of this session. Uh, by this week, you should have it. And have a great school year. And see you for the session tomorrow. You can tell your colleagues it's for Glenco Science. Thank you, Shelly. I appreciate your time today, this morning. You're, you're very welcome. You all take care. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye.